All right, welcome to Wisconsin.golf, our Wisconsin.golf conversation this week is with Tess Hackworthy, just back from her professional debut at the Colorado Women's Open. Tess, uh, you made the cut, you made a check. It had to have been a really good feeling uh, out there in Denver. It definitely was an awesome feeling. I'm, I'm happy with my first start on the pro tour. Uh, wish I would have played even a little bit better, but that's kind of how the game of golf is. Uh, but so far, I like my new job. <laughs> well, let's kind of <laughs> talk about you, we, the last time we talked to you was in the middle of all the uh, COVID-19 stuff as it related to college golf. Your senior season at the University of Wisconsin was cut short by it. There was talk about uh, extra eligibility. The University of Wisconsin chose not to extend that to seniors. Some are, mm -hmm. are going to other schools to use it. Some are just going on with their life. Tell us a little bit about how you dealt with the news that there wouldn't be the option to come back to, to Wisconsin and then had to, and, and at what point did you start looking at professional golf? Yeah, so my thought all along uh, throughout my fifth year in school was to turn pro right after this season. And only kind of when the NCAA started talking about giving eligibility back is when I really started to kind of rethink my options. Um, and look into it and un unfortunately got the news from Wisconsin that they were not going to honor the eligibility back so it made my decision a little bit easier um, and you know I I'm really happy with my decision of turning pro it was definitely meant to be um, and as sad as it is it, you know we don't know what college golf is going to look like in the fall and uh, so, you know, if I would have gone that route, I don't know if I would even be able to play in the fall. Um, and right now, pro events are happening and they're thriving. So uh, I'm just thankful to be able to compete. They really are. I guess the one area that ha that has benefited from uh, this COVID-19 era and the major tours being so reluctant to come back too soon because of all the, the people that are involved in running, all the people they want to come watch, the mini tour business is kind of business as usual because it, it has always been conducted in anonymity anyway. And here you get an opportunity to, to, you know, right off the bat play in a, in a great event like the Colorado women's open, as we talked about before we, we started the zoom here. Um, you know, it's uh, thanks to Col uh, Colbank uh, out in, in Colorado, a really well supported event that uh, for the, the professionals can really help, uh, you know, fund you know your activities going forward and uh you had one to play in right off the bat i know i was so lucky and and very thankful and i think the colorado open is super thankful to have cobank as a sponsor because uh you know unfortunately with the circumstances a lot of sponsors are having to pull out of big events like this and and cobank was able to stick with it and uh the colorado open was an awesome event it was run so professionally and it, I mean, it, it attracts a great field. And so I was just really thankful to be there. And they took uh, very cautious measures uh, in terms of protecting everyone's health and safety. Um, so I never felt uncomfortable at all. And um, it, golf can certainly be played in, in these situations. I asked Neil Johnson when we spoke last week about the provisions uh, taken on the uh, outlaw tour in terms of things that were different for you what was different in terms of the way they ran this tournament yeah there were definitely a few differences that I had to adjust to so everyone had to take a cart and in that cart you carried your own rake for the bunkers and your own sand bottle Wow. Um, you were allowed to show up just one hour before your tea time and start practicing 45 minutes prior to your tea time. So I, I kind of had to adjust my, my routine um, for those reasons. And uh, the, I guess the, really the only other difference was they had a pin attendant on every hole. So no one could touch wow. the pin, just that one attendant did it for you. And so, um, which, you know, I, I kind of liked, I'm a very social golfer, it keeps me relaxed. So having someone to, to approach you on every green to say hi, ask you how your day is going, just someone to talk to you about things other than golf and keep you smiling and happy. I mean, they certainly watched some great play out there, it seemed like. And so it was, it, it was definitely really fun to see people, new people with smiling faces on every hole. Well, and it's not that much different, uh, you know, the way you describe that um, at the, uh, I guess it's uh, 
the uh, the tournament in San Diego on the PGA Tour at Torrey Pines. They had a, and actually, all, I think every PGA Tour event has on one hole. It's the uh, I think the Folds of Honor hole, and they have a member of the U.S. military standing greenside to hold the pin. And it not only involves you know our great military, but it also gives you know build, helps build awareness. Maybe that's something that people choose to do. But pretty impressive that they were able to find 18 volunteers to to man the flags at all these holes. I know it. It was so kind of the community to kind of to step up and to support. But what I understood is that the Colorado Open in that town is a huge event and people yeah. love coming out to watch the play. And unfortunately they couldn't come watch. And so this was their opportunity to, to see people play. And, um, you know, one of the guys said, we have plenty of volunteers because people don't have anything else to do right now. <laughs> so they're super excited to be out there. And it also worked great for live scoring because not only did they take care of the pin for you, but they took down your score. So live scoring was every hole instead of every wow. three holes. Okay, that makes sense. Well, uh, something good. We're learning something new every time we talk to someone about how people are dealing with this, and maybe it'll lead to some long-term things that'll be good for the game of golf. So, we'll Absolutely. See. Yeah, I think so, too. Like, some interesting changes, um, and hopefully good improvements are going to come out of this. So 74, 71, 75, uh, I believe I saw $720 was the first paycheck to mm -hmm. Tess Hackworthy. Uh, entry, I, I went over this with Neil last week because uh, – you know, the, when you're a mini tour player, you're looking at, uh, you know, your check that you get at the end of the week minus your entry fee. And it gives you the kind of, it gives people the idea that while it may seem like a lot of glamour in playing golf for a living, um, you, you're going to have to work your way up till that check versus the entry fee is a really big number. And uh, yes. I mean, you, you got to love that. You're probably going to frame that first check, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I unfortunately won't get it until three more weeks, but uh, it's kind of, I mean, I played golf for three days and made money from it. Well, actually, I don't know if I broke even compared to how much we spent on the trip, but <laughs> that's for another, I think I'll have to make a few more putts in order to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's super exciting. And like I said, so far, this is an awesome job to get to play the game I love and, and make a little money off of it and meet some new people. Can't complain. Were you nervous at all in the first year, or was it just the same old, same old? You've played so much competitive golf over the last five or six years. Yeah, you know, I haven't played a competitive match for a few months, so I was definitely a little nervous, but uh, kind of just hopped right into it the minute we got out there, and, and nothing seemed to change. I, I knew a lot of the girls out there from college golf, um, and so, yeah, it was just kind of another competitive round this time you know, you don't have a team to play for, but you have uh, kind of a check to pay for and bills to pay. So, right. um, no, it, it, I was a little nervous, but definitely got in the hang of it uh, after a few holes. And, and I was super excited to be competing again. And it was a really solid field. It was, the tournament was won by Jennifer Cupshaw, who golf fans will remember from mm -hmm. Uh, what she did last year at the Augusta National Women's Amateur. And uh, so you, you, I'm sure you had a chance to see, maybe play with a lot of different people. Uh, what was your impression of the field and, and how tough the tournament was? Yeah, the, the field was awesome. Uh, there were a ton of LPGA players, ton of Symmetra Tour players, and, and girls that I've been, been following on leaderboards for years now. And so to be in the same field as them and, and kind of watch them practice, go through their routine and then and play with them as well was uh, really inspiring to me. Um, and even the, these next coming weeks, the, the fields and the WAPT tour events are, are full of LPGA players and, and really strong fields as well. So um, I, when I saw the field list, I was a little intimidated, a little nervous, but right when I got out there, I knew that I definitely could could stick with them and compete with them. So I'm looking forward to future events. And we should tell our viewers if they hear a beep go off in the background, it means the wash is done and you're going to switch it over to the dryer <laughs> for us. And you're, you're, you're now in that mini tour um, uh, kind of uh, rhythm of golf, fly home, do laundry, uh, get a good meal, and then go back out again. Uh, you yes. mentioned uh, the WAPT uh, tour um, and uh, in Texas is the next stop. Tell us a little bit about what's on the, the schedule going forward and what this tour does for you as you wait for the opportunity to use your limited Symmetra tour eligibility. Yeah, so the Symmetra tour has decided to resume in late July. So I was looking for anything to stay competitive until then. And 
um, have, I've heard about the WAPT and uh, done a little bit of research on it. And I hear super good things. It's a tour uh, that's mainly based in Texas, the Arkansas area. Um, and it's run very professionally. Um, and in fact, a lot of the points in the money list uh, help you towards Symmetra Tour. Um, so the, the winner of the WAPT Tour event is exempt to the following week's Symmetra Tour event. And so there's um, definitely some um, initiative and, and you really wanna, wanna play well, especially if you don't have full Symmetra Tour status. Um, so I'm, can you see me? I feel like it's kind of dark. It, it just got dark for a second, but I tell you what, it, you're just trying to rub okay. it in. It's a beautiful day back in Madison, Wisconsin, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay. So I'm, I'm headed down to Texas. There's two WAPT events taking place in that area. And then my third week down there, I'll go to Arkansas for another event. So you um, have to be, you don't have to be a member, but it definitely helps for the entry fee. Um, pros and amateurs can play in it. And you have to be accepted to play in the event. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I haven't played in these events before, but I've heard great things. They run super well. Um, and they're full four days. So 72 holes of wow. golf um, is awesome. And they do have a cut after 54 holes. Um, so I, 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 like I said, I've heard awesome things about these events. So I'm really excited to play in it. So anyone who's doing the math on that knows that if you're going to spend the next three or four weeks in Texas and Arkansas, it means that um, your reign as the Wisconsin State Women's Open champion is over and you will not be coming back to play at the Legend of Brandy Brook here in a few weeks. Um, but oh. it's not the, I mean, it, 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 it's not the first time that's happened as, as uh, yeah, Wisconsin collegiate golfers transition to professional golf. Sometimes your travels take you where you just can't get back and make it work. Uh, tell us about yeah. uh, having to miss that event and, and not being able to defend here. What Four-time defending champion, right? <laughs> Four times. Yeah, I'm, I'm really bummed I won't be playing in the event. And unfortunately, uh, this kind of happens with golf where a lot of tournaments overlap and you just have to make those decisions. And, and I think this is the best decision in order to uh, keep moving on with my career. And, you know, the tournament's at Brandy Brook this year, which is a really fun course. I played in the AJGA event there for years. So um, yeah. I love that course. It's super fun. Um, and I'm definitely going to miss playing in the event and seeing a lot of the local Wisconsin players that I see every year. But I was super honored to play in the event for all the years that I did. Um, and, and maybe I'll be back next year. Hopefully it works in my schedule. But like I said, this year, um, it just it, it's the better decision to continue on with my career to to play in these WAPT events. Now, one of the events on the Symmetra Tour that hasn't been canceled is the one at Brown Deer Park, the PHC Classic. Do you have any knowledge at this point as we talk uh, as to whether you might be in that field? It actually has been canceled. It has been canceled. Yeah, so we, we had a, a, a player Zoom meeting last week and they announced the new updated schedule that will only contain 10 events. 10 events. The first one starting in Michigan and unfortunately the Milwaukee one will not be happening. Um, but they have committed to supporting the event next year for the 21 season. So it's really promising 21 season, we are told, is looking like a fabulous schedule. And, and a lot of the sponsors will be able to support the tour then. But this year, um, our, some sponsors are just unable to commit to that. And so did I read then be, prior to that announcement, I think they made the announcement that they're going to wrap around the, the LPGA and Symmetra schedule two or tour seasons also, aren't they? Aren't they going to start now? And then there, there will be no Q school this fall. Is that correct? Q school was unfortunately canceled, uh, which I'm a little bummed about because I was really hoping to go back later this year and earn more status for the 21 season. So what this means is everyone's status is locked in for 2021. Um, so I'm going to have to work on conditional status for the 21 season. Um, but, you know, it's, like I said, I think this WAPT tour is going to be my friend for the next couple seasons as I work to, to gain more status on the Symmetra tour. And I'll, I'll kind of maybe we'll wrap this up by talking about the state of your game right now. I think, you know, coming out of, you know, with a little rust and going 74, 71, 75 tells me there's some real positives there. How do you feel about the way things are? And after one week of uh, your new job, what do you feel that you have to work on to get to where you want to go? 
Yeah, I definitely saw some some great things out of my game, and I am really proud with how I played. I just I need to make some more putts. I I averaged over 14 greens around, um, and my short game felt really good. Um, I gave myself some awesome opportunities on the greens to make birdie, and I unfortunately was I only able to convert three of those for 54 <laughs> holes. So I uh, definitely learned that I got to tighten some things up around the greens um, and and just be a little more confident in, in putting those putts at the bottom of the cup. Um, so I'm definitely headed to the course here in a few minutes to, to tighten a few things up before I head out tomorrow. Outstanding. We'll test laundry. Get mom to make a nice home cooked meal and then <laughs> off to the golf course. And uh, we'll wish you the best yes. of luck on the WAPT. And I'm sure we'll be in touch uh, as you uh, make your way around the country. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Sure. Tess, thank you very much. That's Tess Hackworthy, former Badger, now out there playing professional golf here on Wisconsin.golf. <laughs>